Welcome everyone to the Actors Academy. Thank you for tuning in today. So I'm going to create one of the most valuable videos you're ever going to watch as an actor. This is the type of video I would have loved to have seen years ago. Today you're going to learn from an Oscar nominated actor and a Golden Globe winning actress. One of the best ways to learn acting is by seeing acting in the process and by watching great actors who have already made it. Just as other YouTube channels will break down a scene in its components of lighting, script, and cinematography, we're going to break it down in terms of the acting. The source material we are going to use today is from the film The Menu with Ray Fiennes and Anya Taylor-Joy. We are going to stop and go through the scene and talk about the core concepts and techniques that work and how you should implement them for yourselves. Even when I went to drama school, we didn't have instruction like this, so I hope you all enjoy. So first, what I want you all to do is watch the first few moments of this scene and tell me what you notice. As a way to work your actor brain to better deduce information, comment down below everything you noticed. I'll reply back to each of you. Multiple points are going to be brought up in this video. So let's see if you think and analyze scenes the same way that I do. How hungry? Starved. What are you hungry for? What do you have? Everything. You know what I'd really like? Tell me. A cheeseburger. So one of the first things to notice from this scene are the eyes. If you are a loyal member of this channel, or if you've been in our 10 hour acting masterclass, then you know what I'm talking about. The eyes are the gateway into the soul. When it comes to movie making as the actor, your eyes hold a whole story. So for those of you who are trying to learn acting or improve your craft, never forget this line. The eyes are the gateway into the soul. Now you might have thought this is it, but let's actually get into the nitty gritty and specifics of this. It's one thing to just make this statement, but it's something else completely different to understand it. So if we go back to the scene, watch this and tell me how many times do they blink? How hungry? Starved. What are you hungry for? What do you have? Everything. You know what I'd really like? Tell me. A cheeseburger. Yeah, we can do a cheeseburger. A real cheeseburger. Not some fancy deconstructed avant bullshit. A real cheeseburger. Well, I'll make you a very good, very traditional cheeseburger. I don't think you can. I'll make you feel as if you're eating the first cheeseburger you ever ate. The cheap one your parents could barely afford. Now you might be surprised by this, but we had zero blinks. And even when it looks like Ray Fine's eyelids move, they don't fully blink. Do you know how many times the average person blinks in a minute? 14 to 17 times. Now even though this scene is 30 seconds, you'd think there would be half as many blinks. But don't forget there were two actors in the scene, so in total, based on science, we should have 14 to 17 blinks. But in this scene, we had zero. Listen to what David Fincher's editor had to say about blinking on the editing podcast. <laughs> We're conscious of blinks not to turn up in the wrong places. I don't think there was an effort to remove them through the film. It's just the nature of how his performance was, but there's been an effort to remove them in previous films when they're all kind of landing off rhythm. And it's mostly about when you get into the meat, like the point of a scene and you're in close-ups and you want something delivered with intention and purpose. Someone blinking all the way through it tends to dilute what they're saying. I'm not the Zodiac. And if I was, I certainly wouldn't tell you. If the blinking doesn't happen in a rhythm of the words and it's sort of separated from what's being communicated, it starts to sort of turn into Donald Trump's hands <laughs> where it doesn't have a rhythm of what's being said. That's the main thing we're looking for is, is for everything to feel like it has intention. I bet you never knew this about blinking and I bet no acting class ever expressed this to you. Why you might ask, which my response to this is, that's a good question. When it comes to art, we are told not to think about it too technically. You must just feel. Why can't we just have both? Who said that was wrong? Anyways, I'm on a tangent, let's get back into this. These characters both hold power because their gazes are strong and locked onto one another. The more your character blinks, the weaker they will appear. The less your character blinks, the stronger they will appear. Check out this clip from Oscar award winning actor Michael Caine talking about blinking. And if I keep blinking, it weakens me. But if I'm talking to you and I don't blink and I just keep going and I don't blink and I keep on going and I don't blink, you start to listen 
to what I'm saying. <laughs> and sure. it makes me a very strong yeah. person, as opposed to someone who is sitting there going... Yeah. Which is someone who's completely flustered. Why does this happen and how will you still make a mistake when trying to follow this? First off, you have to remember when filming a movie you are working in a finite amount of space. You only see what's shown to you on that big rectangular movie screen. Unlike when you are outside in the real world and you see everything, for movies you only see what the camera is pointing at. Your eyes then become overemphasized and any movement or over blinking can become distracting. Think about it this way. Since the dawn of time, the eyes have always been the gateway to the soul, but the camera amplifies their power. Now, I'm going to give you another phrase which I'm asking you to please remember. It is a balancing act. And this leads me on to the next point of how you will probably make a mistake when trying to follow this new understanding that you have. You're not going to balance the idea. And don't worry, that's okay. Even the person who understands the concept of swimming will sink at first. It just requires a little practice. So let's talk about balance. Am I stating that you should never blink? No, it's okay to blink. You don't want to get too caught up in your head, but the less you blink, the more the story you are trying to tell will come out. I challenge you after this video to put on a movie and just watch the blinking. How often are you actually seeing actors blink on the screen? I'll show four 30 second clips sped up for time's sake and I'll count how many blinks there are just to help further solidify this point. But don't just take my word for it, go and do the research yourself. Remember, just based on science, the average person in one minute blinks 14 to 17 times. But in movies, it's far less. Okay, let's get into the next part of our video. I'm gonna ask you a very simple question. How much are these actors moving on screen? Is it a lot or a little? Well, let's take a look at it. My food is not to your liking. For starters, you've taken the joy out of eating. Every dish you've served tonight has been some intellectual exercise rather than something you want to sit and enjoy. When I eat your food, it tastes like it was made with no love. Even if we speed up the clip and watch a longer portion, the movements stay relatively the same. Why is this? We first must remember that the camera picks us up in a frame. It's not like real life when you can stand in a restaurant and you see almost everything. The camera is specific. Now, why is there not too much movement here? Why are the actors not throwing their arms about or gesturing to the food? It might be a natural act, but they avoid it. Why? Well, this all has to do with framing. You see, the more frame you have, the more you can move. The less frame you have, the less you should move. Pretty simple, right? Actors are very much so aware of the framing that they're in, and they know which shots matter. Take a look at this scene, where more of the actor's body is visible, like I said, more framing, and see how much more liberty the actor has to move. <laughs> I know what I'm gonna do. What are you doing? I'm gonna do something I should have done a long time ago. Ah! Don't do anything foolish, Harry! Where most actors tend to go wrong, especially in the auditioning phase of self-tapes, is they'll tend to move too much. Take a look at this great clip someone made. It perfectly describes what people think acting is versus what acting actually is. Subtlety is powerful, and we found this from many great actors who know how to use stillness. Take a look at these examples. In prison you get used to silence, you know? And finally allows us to die with pride. Even though sometimes we have to be steady and... I bet you can't tell me what it smells like in the Sistine Chapel. You've never actually stood there and looked up at that beautiful ceiling. I thought it was a family secret. It's a recipe. No. Now, how can actors go wrong with this? Again, it goes wrong when you take it to the extreme. No one is saying to become a statue. We all have moments in our lives where we tend to be either more still or more active with our bodies. Just remember that the closer the camera gets, the more subtle you should start to become. And the farther the camera gets, the more freedom that you have. Next, I wanna talk about natural tonal inflections. When acting, we typically wanna hear the life of the actor coming through their voice. Movie making is a very visual medium, but also sound does have a huge part in it. One of the reasons I love showing this scene to actors is because it's a perfect case study. One of the things that is very clear in this scene is the difference in which Anya Taylor-Joy and Ray Fiennes each speak. 
Anya is much more matter-of-fact. Ray Fiennes is more emotional. He's not bawling his eyes out, nor is he shouting to the moon, but there is a difference in quality between the two actors. You're, you're still hungry? Yes, I am. How hungry? Starved. What are you hungry for? What do you have? Everything. What's funny about this moment is that typically when an actor's tone is matter of fact, it can come across as emotionless and just speaking the lines, which is what you never want to do as an actor. Ironically enough though, given the context of this scene, it does work perfectly. But in the general context, you want to lean towards more of the style of Ray Fiennes where his words are more connected and have life. So how can we achieve the same type of natural emotional speech as Ray's character? It requires you to have an opinion on what you are saying. Watch how he talks about his food. What about my food is not to your liking. Everyone knows love is the most important ingredient. You're, you're still hungry? How hungry? What are you hungry for? You know, we can do a cheeseburger. I'll make you feel as if you're eating the first cheeseburger you ever ate. The cheap one your parents could barely afford. As the actor who is playing a chef, he has a deep passion for his cooking. He has a very clear perspective and opinion. His opinion can be felt through his speech. Typically, when we can feel an actor's opinion, you are feeling their emotions. This is a much easier concept for actors to grasp. If I tell you, let me feel your emotions when you speak, you may freeze up or give a half approach of what you think feeling is. This leads to more of an artificial performance, which nobody wants to watch. On the other hand, if I tell you to let me feel your opinion, it becomes a lot easier to express yourself and therefore your emotions come through your voice. That's a pro tip that I bet none of you have ever heard anywhere else before. Remember, there are so many different ways to learn acting. The best thing you can do is learn from the greats. I hope you walked away from this video with new insights into acting and how to better approach your craft. We can find something to learn from any great performance. If there's another video that you'd like me to analyze and go through, let me know down in the comment section below for which movie or which television show it is. And if you want to increase your acting and take it to the next level, our 10 hour acting masterclass or 2.0 version will be down in the description down below and also in the comment section if you're interested in it. See you again soon. Peace.